Um, when I met Heller Levinson in 2006, uh, he still lived in LA, and he was struggling to find a satisfying theoretical explanation for the newness of his work. Language reconceived as alive, vibrant, networked, engendering plexes of meaning instead of delimiting it. When I would question an occasional word as cliche, he would explain the need to revive it, to probe back to its vital core, bring its alternate or forgotten usages to light. In short, to rebirth language from the embers of the stale ordinary. Since then, his undertaking has proliferated. This is the third volume written um, under the auspices of Hinge Theory. Hinging is well discussed on Heller's website in an interview, and I'm not going to try to um, explain it here, but just to give a little bit of a taste. A basic version is uh, the reemployment of a particle such as the road to X road with different configurations of X, or the reconsideration of the same word or phrase in different constellations. One example in this volume is the corner of X and Y, where X and Y are different each time, as is the sequel. These modules are more than a pattern into which prosody can be implanted. They engender threads of inquiry. What does it mean to be a corner, to be in a corner, to be cornered? Is it a union? a collision, a collusion, an avoidance by changing direction? What happens when two disparate entities are cornered together? Is it comfortable, awkward, implosive, explosive? So all those kind of considerations can be opened up by these, this approach to poetry. Heller is not the kind of poet who sits down and dashes off a poem. He sometimes spends weeks, months, or longer in researching, um, both in terms of reading and experientially. And he continues to deepen and expand the sphere of his interests. He's an enthusiastic prober of meaning. And this volume, for instance, benefits from an extended study of art in Europe and several US museums. While extending the previous uh, volume in terms of modules and so on, Rack Lariat, which is the name of the volume, also bursts into new territory. For instance, with prose poems that Heller calls wishes that spill off the page like a torrent in a thunderstorm with four plays of four sentence hit you between the eyes blip of a poem. Rack Lariat is organized by module such as the series commencing with how much of. We typically associate the phrase how much with quantity and measurement. Instead these brief poems bring an expanding query. If you have a book, uh, you can look at the example I'm going to read on page 49. It's a, it's a short poem, um, which is spaced out on the page to give it sort of ample breathing room. A resting place or a jumping off base? One's original home as remembered or as it might be now? The place you can't go back to? Home as leaky house, payments due? Our home is imagined, a place of welcome and fulfillment without continual demand. How much of our longing centers around one or more of these versions of home? Here we have an emotive knot of human experience captured on the quick. In approaching the book, I suggest that you don't skip the section introductions. <coughs> they will gear you up for the delights to follow. For example, the Rack Lariat section clarifies the book title, and this is on page 179. You have a book to read it from. <coughs> Rack Lariat is meant to suggest the artistic mission a mission compelled to reject all that is stale, handed down, habituated. 
an enterprise in its commitment to the vitally essential, intolerant of falsehoods, of the trivially redundant, of the uninspired quotidian. The artist, racked with subversive determination, hurls a lariat extending outward, a hurl both tremulous and nervy, daring to loop the wildly original, the purely integral, and lead it home, undomesticated yet found. This section is dedicated to those artists. So that's the beginning of a long ekphrastic section, a section on visual artists, which includes, among living artists, Michael Dominic, who paints with molten metals, Kurt de Vries, a Belgian artist whose dot images accompany hinging poems, and Linda Lynch, an ongoing collaborative partner, a mutual muse, whose drawings accompany and blend with a number of poems in Rack Lariat. In response to a puzzled relative at Heller's previous reading, I found myself saying that Heller is a poet's poet. His writing is definitely worth the effort it will probably take if you want to delve deeply and will most likely enlarge your vocabulary and frames of reference, but such effort is not required to enjoy it. Don't rack your brains for any literal meaning you might try to squeeze from the poems. Just soak in through your pores the resonance, rhythms, euphony, and cacophonous shots, and their vitality will spark your own. Good. 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 Good.